How to Train Your Dragon is a series of 11 children's books written by British author Cressida Cole. The books are set in a fictional Viking world and focus on the experiences of protagonist Hiccup and his tribe as they train dragons as pets. The books were published by Hodder Children's Books in the UK and by Little, Brown and Company in the US. The first book was published in 2003 and the latest book in the series was published in 2014. The books have subsequently been made into a franchise consisting of two feature films of the same name, several short stories and an animated television series created by DreamWorks Animation. Books, Cole has published 11 full novels to date based around the adventures of Hiccup, the first published in 2003 and the latest published in 2013. Almost all the books have titles based around an instruction guide, How to Train Your Dragon, published in 2003. How to Be a Pirate, published in 2004. How to Speak Dragonese, published in 2005. How to Cheat a Dragon's Curse, published in 2006. How to Twist a Dragon's Tail, published in 2007. A Hero's Guide to Deadly Dragons, published in 2008. How to Ride a Dragon Storm, published in 2008. How to Break a Dragon's Heart, published in 2009. How to Steal a Dragon Sword, published in 2011. How to Seize a Dragon's Jewel, published in 2012. How to Betray a Dragon's Hero, published in 2013. In addition to these 12 main novels, Cole has also published other supplementary stories as part of the series, The Day of the Dreader is a short story published in 2012 and the novella How to Train Your Viking was published as part of World Book Day 2006 and is claimed to be written by Dragon Toothless and translated by Cole. Both of these titles were published in the USA as part of the May 2014 How to Train Your Dragon Special Edition, with brand new short stories. Paperback Movie Tie-In Edition A picture book, Hiccup the Seasick Viking published in 2000, is not considered a part of the series despite featuring the same character of Hiccup. An illustrative guide to the dragon world, titled The Incomplete Book of Dragons, was released in June 2014. Cole cites the Scottish Inner Hebrides Islands and stories of Scandinavian Scotland as inspirations for the book. Characters, Vikings, Hiccup Horrendous Haddock III is the protagonist. He is unusual for a Viking not only physically, being very thin with red hair, but also intellectually as he thinks before he acts and is abnormally clever. He is one of the only people ever to understand and be able to speak Dragonese, the language of the dragons. He is a good left-handed sword fighter and owns two dragons, Hunting Dragon Toothless and Flying Dragon Windwalker. In Book 11, he is bitten by one of the witch's vampire spy dragons twice, causing him to lose use of his left side. Fishlegs is Hiccup's best friend who is allergic to carny dragons, like monstrous nightmares. He has a squint, asthma and is seen as a wimp, but he has shown himself to be quite cunning when he needs to be. He also has berserk tendencies, meaning that in the midst of battle he is overcome by bloodlust and becomes extremely dangerous. His dragon is a basic brown named Horogo. He was washed on the shore of Burke when he was a baby and has no parents, he was taken care of by a caretaker dragon. Now Fishlegs is the master of a deadly shadow, a three-headed dragon that could shoot flames and lighting and can camouflage. Kamikaze is a fierce sword fighter from the tribe of female warriors known as the Bog Burglars. She is a good friend of Hiccup's, is very skilled at escapes and burglary, but she does not think very deeply. Her dragon is a rare mood dragon named Stormfly. Stoic the Vast is Hiccup's father and leader of the hairy hooligans. Unlike his son, he is incredibly strong and fat but rather unintelligent. He owns three dragons called Newt's Breath, Bullheart and Hookfang. Newt's Breath appears in the first two books, Hookfang is only in the first book, while Bullheart appears in book nine, but he may have more appearances. Snitlout, or Snotchface Snitlout, is Hiccup's much despised cousin. He bullies and bosses the others around, especially Hiccup whom he addresses as useless. He is top class at bashy ball, advanced rudery and everything else. His dragon is a brilliant scarlet monstrous nightmare named Fireworm, 
who because of her breed should technically belong to Hiccup according to ancient Viking law. He becomes chief of the hooligan tribe at the end of Book 9, but gets killed in an attack at the end of Book 11 in an attempt to help Hiccup become king. Later, Hiccup silently forgives Snitlout for the years of rivalry between them. Dogs breathe the dew brain is Snitlout's friend and sidekick. He is usually seen following Snitlout's orders, usually the difficult and tedious jobs. He is not very intelligent and does not talk much. His dragon is a gronkle named Seaslug. Valhalla-Rama is Hiccup's mother. She appears in only a few books, and is often away questing. She once loved humongously hotshot the hero and gave him a ruby heart necklace. She reappears in Book 10 to help Hiccup become king of the wilderness. Mogadon the Meathead is chief of the Meathead tribe, close neighbors of the hairy hooligans. A man with a fake leg and an eye patch, he shares a sometimes vicious rivalry with Stoic. Thugori is Mogadon's son, and very like Snitlout. Although he is large, muscular, well respected and has a huge silver monstrous nightmare dragon called Killer, he stands up for Hiccup and works with him in the first book. Later, in Book 10, he becomes the first member of Hiccup's company of the Dragonmuk. Alvin the Treacherous is Hiccup's archenemy. He used to be chief of the Outcasts books 2 to 3 and was again in books 9 to 12. Although he is a fantastic sword fighter, he is frequently losing parts of his body such as all of his hair, a hand, a foot, a nose, and an eye. He is also covered in warts, and so his face is swollen, causing him to wear an iron mask to hide it. His various evil plots have included using the hooligans to steal Grimbeard the Ghastly's treasure, using the Romans to burgle all the dragons in the archipelago, and controlling the deadly exterminated dragons. Norbert the new job is the chief of the hysterical tribe, and Hiccup's second archenemy. Norbert's father, Bigdrub, once went to America and retrieved a potato, but Hiccup took it to cure fish legs of Vorpentitis. Norbert later died at the hands of a Leviat Horgan dragon on his own expedition to America. As his name suggests, he is insane and uses his giant axe a euro one gold side and one black side a euro to decide everything. Humongously hotshot the hero has been trapped on the island of Lava Louts for 15 years. He went out on a quest to find the fire stone for Hiccup's grandfather, Old Wrinkly, so he could marry Hiccup's mother Valhalla-Rama. He failed, and eventually married Tantra Mowugali, the daughter of Uji the Uglythag in Book 8. Big Boobied Bertha is the leader of the Bog Burglars and the mother of Kamikaze. As her name indicates, she has very large breasts. Gobbo the Belch is in charge of the Viking initiation program as well as the pirate training program. He is described as being enormous, extremely loud, and having a wild yellow beard. Majutz the Murderous is the chief of the Murderous tribe. A vicious, frightening, vile smelling man covered in skull tattoos and with hate on both his knuckles, he is considered one of the scariest men in the archipelago. He also never speaks. He has a stealth dragon stolen from him by Bertha and intends to kill her, and later tries to kill Stoic and Bertha. Both times he is stopped by Hiccup. Kamikaze supposedly burgles from him regularly. Excelina is Alvin's mother. She is however pure evil and wants Hiccup's sword. It is said that she never took any good care of Alvin the treacherous and never loved him either. She was locked in a tree trunk for twenty years by UG the Uglythag. Her name was unknown until the ninth book. She is the cause of Alvin's warts and is covered in them. She uses vampire spy dragons as spies for her. Old Wrinkly, 93 years old, is Valhalla-Rama's father and Hiccup's grandfather. Old Wrinkly is the soothsayer and doctor of the hairy hooligans tribe and only thinker of the tribe. Between the beginning of book 9 and the end of book 11, it is unknown what came of him. Dragons Toothless is Hiccup's hunting dragon. He appears to be a green and red common or garden dragon, although fish legs spread a false story that he is near extinct, more vicious relative of the monstrous nightmare breed called the Toothless Daydream and possibly the offspring of the mighty dragon ruler King Daggerfangs. He is one of the king's lost things. In Book 11, it is revealed he is a young said dragonus Giganticus Maximus. Windwalker is Hiccup's flying dragon. 
he smells of drinking chocolate and is hairy. Horoko, in Books 1 a Euro 3, 5, 9, is fish legs dragon of the basic brown species. She is named Horror for effect and cow because she is not dangerous and sleeps a lot. Fish legs suspects she is a vegetarian. She is three times the size of Toothless and is his best dragon friend. She probably joined the Red Rage between books 9 and 10. Fireworm is Snitlout's completely immodest and temperamental dragon. She is a red monstrous nightmare and immensely dislikes Toothless, often jeering in Dragonese, prodding and attacking him. Stormflea is Kamikaze's dragon. Unusually, Stormflea is a mood dragon, allowing her to change color depending on her mood. When angry, she will turn blue-black instead of her normal golden color. Stormflea is unusual in that she speaks in Norse, but she is a pathological liar despite a change of color making it apparent when she is lying. Toothless develops a crush on Stormflea when he meets her for the first time. Wodensfang is an ancient brown dragon, living from when Hiccup horrendous Haddock I lived. He is a wise dragon, whom Hiccup III meets while getting the crown. He is able to understand and speak Norse and helps Hiccup in his quest to stop the rebellion. He is an old said dragonus Giganticus Maximus. Patience, innocence, and arrogance is a triple-headed deadly shadow dragon. He can camouflage. He is an air dragon. He was Termagontus's riding dragon, and he swore to look after fish legs when he was a baby and set out to sea. The two are reunited in Book 10 and they officially become fish legs dragon. They have individual personalities. Furious is a said dragonus Gigantus Maximus that started the Dragon Rebellion and continually tries to chase down Hiccup. He was the dragon brother of Hiccup Horrendous Haddock too. Plot Synopsis How to Train Your Dragon The book follows Hiccup as he captures a dragon as a rite of passage and attempts to train him so that he will not be exiled from Burke, as is tradition. Led by Gobbo the Belch, Hiccup manages to catch a small dragon, whom he names Toothless and attempts to train it through his own methods, when the How to Train Your Dragon book was found to have only one page and therefore unhelpful. During the final part of the Rite of Passage Toothless offends another dragon and a fight ensues between all the dragons. As this is seen as failure to train the dragons correctly, the boys are exiled, allowed to stay one night while a storm rages. During the storm, Two sea dragons are washed up on the shore of the island and one seems a threat to the Vikings. Hiccup is chosen to negotiate with a dragon who calls himself the Green Death which proves futile. While the village elders argue over how to attack the Green Death, Hiccup, the boys and their dragons begin a fight with a dragon, resulting in Hiccup nearly being swallowed and having to be rescued by Toothless, killing the Green Death in the process. Hiccup and Toothless become heroes because of their bravery. Hiccup doesn't know it yet, but he has found the first of the king's lost things. How to be a pirate, the sequel to How to Train Your Dragon starts during a sword fighting at sea less than during a storm, but Hiccup is quite bad at sword fighting. The fight is cut off as the boat tips over and is holed by an object, a coffin, using which Hiccup rides back to the Isle of Burke. On the beach, it is discovered that it is the coffin of Grimbeard the Ghastly, the greatest pirate of all times and Hiccup's great-great-grandfather. Soon the coffin is opened and they find out that it contains a living man, named Alvin the Treacherous, who hides his true identity under the name Alvin the Poor but Honest Farmer. Alvin tells the hooligans that he was locked in the coffin and sent out to sea by some very rude people. He claims that he discovered the coffin buried in the peaceable country, and upon opening it, a booby trap was set off which cut off his right hand. He also tells the hooligans that in the coffin, he found a riddle that tells how to find the treasure of Grimbeard the Ghastly and a map that depicts the island where the treasure is buried. They figure that the treasure is in the Isle of Scullions, an island inhabited by dragons called Scullions, that while being blind, deaf, and flightless, have a keen sense of smell. According to the riddle, the hunting dragon of the air to the hairy hooligans' tribal sniff out the treasure. The hooligans travel to the Isle of the Scullions, where a small treasure chest is found along with Grimbeard's famous sword, the Stormblade. However, Grimbeard has booby-trapped the chest with a smell that would wake up all of the Scullions on the island, and a brief, desperate fight with the Scullions ensues, 
during which Hiccup dislocates his right arm. A few of the scullions are killed, and the Vikings escape with the treasure. Upon nearing Berk, the hooligans begin fighting over the treasure, and as they fight, they are ambushed by a group of cannibalistic Vikings known as the Outcasts. Alvin reveals himself to be the Outcasts chief, and another battle starts. The ship soon catches fire and sinks. Everyone abandons it, climbing on the Outcasts ship to continue the battle, but Hiccup, Toothless, Fishlegs, and Alvin are trapped underneath the capsized ship, kept alive with an air pocket. As the air pocket is finally destroyed by the weight of the capsized ship, Toothless finds an underwater cavern filled with air. As the party begins to explore the cavern they come to a door and upon opening it, they find it filled with mountains of gold and jewels, the real treasure of Grimbeard the Ghastly. Alvin turns on Hiccup to kill him. In the sword fight that follows, Hiccup discovers that he is actually left-handed and hence why he was never good at sword fighting. In the fight Alvin steps on a pile of treasure under which is hidden a monstrous strangulator, an octopus-like creature that was placed there by Grimbeard to guard his treasure. It consumes Alvin, and as it comes next for Hiccup, Hiccup tricks the creature into injecting itself with its own poison. The creature's nervous system is destroyed and they escape, but Hiccup decides that the world is not ready for the treasure, and leaves it behind. They soon surface with the aid of Toothless, and the book ends with Hiccup. Toothless and Fishlegs all getting back to the village and finding that the hooligans had survived and won the battle with the outcasts but had set them free. In the epilogue, Hiccup tells us that in a secret compartment in the handle of the sword that he used to fight Alvin, he found the last will and testament of Grimbeard the Ghastly. It turns out that the sword was Grimbeard's favorite sword. It is revealed in How to Steal a Dragon Sword that the sword's name is the Dragon Sword, but Old Wrinkly names it the Endeavor. Hiccup has found two of the king's lost things. How to Speak Dragonese, the third in the series starts during a boarding an enemy ship lesson. Gobba explains to his students that they will practice on the easy target of a peaceable fishing boat. Gobba warns his students not to leave the bay, or else they might have an encounter with sharkworms. Snitlout and Oaksbreath ram their ship at Hiccup and Fishleg's ship and the ship loses course and they get lost. Fishlegs cannot see through the fog, and mistakes a Roman ship for a peaceable fishing boat, and the two are attacked by the Romans. While on board, Hiccup listens in on two men discussing their plan to steal all the dragons in the Inner Isles. Their plan was to kidnap the heirs to bog burglars and hairy hooligans, with each kidnapping squad disguised as the other tribe, so each tribe would accuse the other of kidnapping, and while they were arguing, the Romans would be free to capture all the dragons in the Inner Isles. To save fish legs and escape, Hiccup secretly takes a Nana Dragon from the bowl of Nana Dragons the Fat Consul is eating, and replaces it with an Electric Squirm. The Fat Consul is electrocuted, and while all the Romans are distracted by this, Hiccup unlocks the dragons' cages, wreaking havoc, and Hiccup and fish legs escape. The Thin Prefect tries to grab Hiccup's How to Speak Dragonese book, but it instead rips into two. As the three try to jump into a different boat, Toothless gets captured. When back at Burke, Hiccup tries to tell his dad what has happened, and tells him to send a war party to save Toothless. Stoic does not believe him, and is more worried about Hiccup's grades. The next morning, Hiccup hears someone singing from his coat. He remembers the Nana Dragon he had rescued. The Nana Dragon tells Hiccup that her name is Ziggurat to the Living God. The Nana Dragon promises to do one thing for Hiccup, in return for what he did for her. During a frightening foreigner's lesson, the Romans, poorly disguised as bog burglars kidnap him and fish legs and take them to Fort Sinister. There they discover Alvin the treacherous as the thin prefect, who cut his way out of the dead strangler's stomach but lost his position as chief of the outcasts due to his hair falling out from the strangler's stomach juices. He is working with the Romans and trying to learn Dragonese. His plan is to create a dragon army that can swim down to get the treasure of Grimbeard the Ghastly for him. Hiccup tricks the Romans into keeping them alive until the day they are supposed to be killed by gladiators. Until then, they are put in a cell, where they meet Kamikaze, the wild female heir to the Bog Burglars Viking tribe. 
Hiccup calls on Ziggur Aestaka and his army to form a plan to rescue the three of them and they are taken to the arena. Hiccup, Kamikaze and Toothless are surprised to find that there are no gladiators. They realize they have filled the arena with water and find shark worms swimming around them. Hiccup launches his plan. Hiccup forces Fishlegs and Kamikaze to throw him into a barrel, because he has a cut, and shark worms are attracted to blood. As the shark worms destroy the barrel, Hiccup appears to fly out of the barrel, and makes the spectators believe he is Thor, and orders the Romans to leave, and to give his book back. However, Alvin attempts to shake out a venomous footprint he had put inside, but fails. Hiccup then appears to break the protection net with a hand gesture, and the shark worms attack the audience. Hiccup lands on the boat the three were on. Hiccup reveal there are armies of tiny dragons on his shirt, and they are propelling him into the air. Some other armies had chewed on the protection net and the locks of the dragon cages all night. He and his friends attempt to escape in the boat, but Alvin orders the portcullis to be held down, and the boat is destroyed. They climb the portcullis and enter a Roman observation balloon and escape to find the search parties from both tribes. Alvin chases them but falls into the sharkworm infested water. After the threesome return, the two tribes realize that their respective heirs are back, call off the fight and celebrate the return of the heirs. However, it is said at the end that during the balloon landing, one of the heroes was stung by the venomous footprint that Alvin had inserted into the book, foreshadowing events in How to Cheat a Dragon's Curse. How to Cheat a Dragon's Curse, this book is the fourth in the series. During a hunting with bows and arrows on Ski's expedition, Hiccup finds fish legs acting strangely when they spot a group of hysterics, a tribe of scary lunatic Vikings. Fish legs starts attacking the hysterics with a ski. Hiccup shoots an arrow at a hysteric who stumbles crazily from side to side, knocking down all of the hysterics. Hiccup and fish legs flee on their skis, with the hysterics behind in hot pursuit. Hiccup falls off the side of a cliff. At first one eye, the saber-toothed driver dragon which had pulled Hiccup and Fishlegs to the top of the mountain, refuses to rescue Hiccup. But when Hiccup points out that if he does not save him, Snotchface Snitlout will become chief of the tribe, one eye saves Hiccup after all, and he and Fishlegs return to the village. Hiccup is worried about Fishlegs, and takes him to see Old Wrinkly. Old Wrinkly examines Fishlegs and tells Hiccup that Fishlegs is suffering from Volpentitis, a disease caused by the sting of a venomous vapunt, and the only cure to this disease is a vegetable called a potato, which can only be found in America. Hiccup does not believe him, because all Vikings, except the hysterics, believe that the world is as flat as a pancake, and there is no such place as America. Old Wrinkly tells Hiccup that Norbert the new job's father, Bigdrub, had actually gone to America and made friends with the Americans, which he called Feather People, and brought back the potato to prove he was right about America being true. However, he was attacked by a doomfang. Old Wrinkly predicts the potato might be in the hysteric territories, and tells him that he must bring it back before ten o'clock the next morning, or else fish legs will die. Hiccup brings Kamikaze and Toothless on the journey to Hysteria, with one eye pulling them on a sleigh. The two children enter through the roof of a house where the Hytrix are celebrating Friday Stay Friday. They lower Kamikaze through the chimney Hiccup accidentally falls into a giant pot of onion soup, and gets discovered by Norbert the new job. Hiccup makes Norbert show him the potato by pretending not to believe in the potato. Norbert finally reveals his father's preserved body, and in Norbert's father's hand is a glass case with ice and has an arrow stuck in it. Hiccup tries to persuade Norbert to give him the potato, but Norbert refuses. Norbert soon gets annoyed with Hiccup, and decides whether Hiccup should or should not die by throwing his double-sided axe into the air. If it lands on the black side, Hiccup will die, if it lands on the white side, he will live. Hiccup cheats by catching the axe just as it is about to land on the black. Norbert is annoyed that Hiccup cheated, and locks him in the cage. After the hysterics fall asleep, Kamikaze picks the lock of Hiccup's cage. Freeing him. Kamikaze lowers herself down with a rope and grabs the potato, but sees something in the glass case that interests her and it too. Suddenly, 
the preserved body of Norbert's father falls on a row of squealers, who give ear-piercing screams. All the hysterics suddenly wake up. Hiccup throws the food on the table at the guards, while Kamikaze knocks Norbert out with the frozen potato. Hiccup, Kamikaze and Toothless get out of the hall through the chimney. The two children ride via food tray down the roof and into hysteria. The three, along with one eye, escape in a boat, but get attacked by the Doomfang, which lives under a frozen river called the Wrath of Thor. The Doomfang breaks out of the ice and uses its tongue to grab the potato and eats it. Hiccup realizes that his mission has failed and wonders if the Doomfang had four pentitis, it showed the symptoms. Once he gets back, he realizes that fish legs had only caught a cold, and Old Wrinkly had made a mistake. Stoic yells at Old Rinky for making Hiccup go on the quest for nothing and almost get killed by Norbert. Hiccup suddenly falls on the same bed fish legs was lying on, and his entire body goes stiff. Old Wrinkly examines Hiccup and says that it is actually Hiccup who has Volpentitis. Hiccup desperately tries to speak, murmuring with me and tries to point at the arrow on the table next to him which had been stuck in the potato for a long time. Fishlegs realizes that Hiccup wants him to shoot him with the arrow. Fishlegs shoots Hiccup on the foot, and Hiccup recovers. In the epilogue, Hiccup buries the arrow that saved his life and a seed on the end of it grows another potato which is used to cover the island with potatoes so no one dies of Volpentitis ever again. How to Twist a Dragon's Tail, the fifth book in the series. The story begins with the children on a herding exercise for their pirate training program. They are distracted by a huge fire rolling down the mountainside. The fire is found to be the doing of the exterminators, big evil fire dragons. While most of the kids escape on Gobber's riding dragon, Goliath, before he is killed by the exterminators, Hiccup and Gobber are left to defend themselves. Hiccup and Gobba are saved by a mysterious man in a fireproof suit riding a white dragon, whom they at first believe to be a man from the treacherous Lava Lout tribe. The man soon reveals himself to be humongously hotshot, one of the greatest heroes on the planet. Although Hiccup's father, Stoic, begins to regard Hotshot with jealousy, he hires him as Hiccup's bodyguard. After that, Hotshot saves Hiccup from several deadly situations all of which are later revealed to be his own doing. Later on at night, Hiccup wakes up to Hotshot looming over him with his swords, arguing with himself whether or not to kill Hiccup. He ultimately decides not to, and Hiccup asks him what he's doing. Hotshot begins to tell Hiccup his story, of how he fell in love with a Viking woman, but her father wanted her to marry someone clever. The woman's father sent Hotshot on an impossible task to find and bring back the Firestone, and the reward was the woman's hand in marriage. Hotshot traveled to the volcano where the Firestone was hidden, but he was captured soon after by the Lava Louts. After a few weeks, he became friends with a jailkeeper named Terrific Al. He asked Terrific Al to bring a half of the Ruby Heart to his love because she vowed to save him if she received the Ruby Heart. Terrific Al told Humongous that he would bring the Ruby Heart to his lady love if he promised to do something for him and disappeared for fifteen years and came back to tell Humongous Hotshot that his love threw the heart out of the window and married somebody else who had already brought back the Firestone. Terrific Al told Humongous the thing he must promise to do is to kill Hiccup, stating that Hiccup is a prince of darkness and a devil child, who will send terror across the archipelago. After Hotshot finishes his story Hiccup figures out that the woman Humongous is talking about is Hiccup's own mother, who had thought he was dead, and that terrific Al is really Alvin the Treacherous. Hiccup, Fishlegs, Hotshot, Kamikaze, the White Dragon and the Wind Walker, Hiccup's riding dragon travel to Lava Lout Island to put the Firestone inside the volcano to stop the volcano from exploding and are attacked by Alvin riding an exterminator. Alvin reveals the first sharkworm he met tore out his eye, but he killed it and hid inside. However after he got out on shore the dead sharkworm's mouth shut on his leg, but he carved a new one from its teeth. The volcano erupts and the exterminators hatch. Hiccup manages to put the stone into the volcano. But on contact with the lava, the fire stone hatches into a fire dragon, revealing that the fire stone is actually an egg. The dragon eats all the exterminators, 
including the one Alvin is riding, Swallowing Alvin. Hiccup and his riding dragon, Wind Walker, run down the island away from lava and fall into the sea. Hiccup's father and others rescue him and everything works out well. In the epilogue, Hiccup tells us that Wind Walker turns out to be his faithful flying dragon. A Hero's Guide to Deadly Dragons, the sixth book in the series is the only one not to have How To in its title. But it is also named How Not To Celebrate Your Birthday. Its cover name is named only A Hero's Guide to Deadly Dragons after Hiccup's informative book inside this book. Hiccup is lost in the library labyrinth and the Driller Dragons and Majots the Murderers are on the prowl, all because of a book. Hiccup's birthday is not going to be the quiet affair he might have hoped for. This book contains an open-up map with the barbaric archipelago, a Dragonese dictionary in the back, dragon profiles and conversations with Toothless. Hiccup wakes up that morning, wishing for a peaceful birthday. He then tries to persuade Toothless to eat his breakfast, which is spinach and driftwood. Toothless refuses, so Hiccup goes to the finals of a burglary competition between the bog burglars and the hooligans alone. When Hiccup returns home, he realizes Toothless has eaten three quarters of Stoic's throne. Stoic comes in the room, and is in a bad temper because he had made a bet to Big Boobied Bertha that he could prove that the hooligans were just as good at burglary as the bog burglars by the end of the day, and also because Hiccup has been researching about dragons and writing in notebooks about them. He throws a tantrum, but remembers that Goberg has stolen the How to Train Your Dragon manual from the Meathead Library under the nose of the hairy scary librarian. Stoic tells Hiccup that if Toothless does one more thing like this, he will banish him, and goes off to find the book. Toothless guiltily reveals that he also burned the copy of How to Train Your Dragon. Kamikaze suggests that they can go to the Meathead Library, and supposedly there might be another copy of the book, and get back home in time for tea. Hiccup, Kamikaze and Fishlegs go to the island of Forget Me on a stealth dragon Big Boobied Bertha had stolen from Madu Guts the Murderous, the chief of the Murderous tribe for the bet with Stoic, to visit the Meathead Public Library. With the help of Stormflea, Kamikaze's dragon, they find the copy of How to Train Your Dragon, though it is a second editor. The hairy scary librarian catches them stealing the book and fights with Kamikaze and Hiccup. Fishlegs throws a book at the hairy scary librarian. However, Stormflea is knocked out in the process, and awakens with no memory of who she is, and how did she get in. The librarian, who falls onto the floor, which is full of red hot ivy worms runs toward the exit, laughing and screaming. The noise attracts driller dragons who are dwelling in the library. Hiccup finds a book that was written by Hiccup Horrendous Haddock the two called A Hero's Guide to Deadly Dragons which was exactly the same book that Hiccup the third wrote, which had been taken from him earlier that morning. He pulls the book out and the shelf opens, revealing hole filled with poisonous pithel worms their only exit. Hiccup takes back the second edition of How to Train Your Dragon to the Isle of Burke. Meanwhile, Majots tracks down the stealth dragon and it leads him to the Isle of Forget Me. They find that it has gone to the Isle of Burke and go there. On the Isle of Burke, both Stoic and Bertha find the stolen things they have got for the bet are missing. The hairy scary librarian arrives and shoots Stoic with a north bow but Hiccup's handwritten book saves Stoic's life and Hiccup. Fishlegs, and Kamikaze come from the sky and squash the librarian flat with the stealth dragon. Majots and Gumboyle arrive for the stealth dragon and are about to kill Bertha. Hiccup saves her by lying to Majots, telling him that the scary hairy librarian had stolen the stealth dragon instead, so she squashed the librarian. Majots believes him, and takes the librarian away. Hiccup persuades Stoic that books are useful and books are unbound by order of the thing. At the end of the book, there is Hiccup's finished A Hero's Guide to Deadly Dragons, as well as a Dragonese Dictionary and Conversation Starters with Toothless. How to Ride a Dragon Storm, this is the seventh book in the series. The story starts at the beach at the bottom of the Murderous Mountains. Majots the Murderous invites two tribes, the Bog Burglars and the Hairy Hooligans to join the Murderous Tribe, over for an inter-tribal friendly swimming race. The winner may have a single request which will be granted by the three chiefs of the three tribes. 
the winner of the swimming race is the one who is the last man back. Majuts, stoic and big boobied Bertha set off to the water more slowly than the others, more certain that they will win the race. Gumboyle and Majuts laugh at the fact that bog burglars and the hooligans are all wearing blubber wing fat to keep themselves warm, and show them the deepest purple flesh fang oil they are wearing, which is so hot, in fact, that a steam is billowing off Majuts' chest. And then they tell them that there is a pot at the edge of the water. Goomobile assures the two chiefs that they can go back, because the race does not start until you start swimming. The two chiefs realize the pot is empty, and also realizes that they have been tricked into returning to the beach in 3 minutes and 22 seconds, and become the losers of the race. Hiccup, Kamikaze and Fishlegs have difficulty in swimming the farther waters, even though their hunting dragons are trying to help especially Fishlegs, who has to swim in arm bands. They encounter Snitlout and Oaksbreath, who destroy Fishlegs' arm bands. Kamikaze and Fishlegs are pulled underwater after a while. Hiccup also is pulled down, and is pulled back to the surface, realizing that he and his friends have been captured by Raptortones. They are taken to a ship and tied up. Their hunting dragons are tied up too. The ship happens to have Majuts. Norbert the new job and Gumboil. Norbert has asked Majuts to take Hiccup, Kamikaze and Fishlegs to the boat, and in return letting him rest on the boat for a few hours, before he continues the race, being the last man back. After Majuts and Gumboil leave, Hiccup returns the ticking thing, which he had stolen from Norbert in an earlier adventure. Norbert attempts to use the ticking thing to get to America. Norbert is about to kill the Hiccup. Kamikaze and fish legs with Axe of Doom, but is forced to untie the three because he cannot read the ticking thing. Hiccup and his friends explore the boat, finding many interesting contraptions that have been made by Norbert, for example, a machine that generates a high-pitched noise that will startle giant dragons and a flying machine that is tested by crew members every day, only to crash into the ocean. Hiccup discovers there are slaves called the Northern Wanderers on the boat. He falls into the salve hatch by accident one day and meets Barkhood and his grandmother. Hiccup pleads that Wanderer is not to kill him, and promises to free them, and is rescued by Norbert. The boat reaches the land of polar serpents, where dangerous dragons called polar serpents roam. Hiccup decides to use Dragon Nip to make the hysterics fall asleep and escape with the Wanderers. Hiccup pours Dragon Nip into the crew's dinner, making them all fall asleep. After all wanderers are safe on the emergency boats, Hiccup falls off the boat and lands on an iceberg, and is chased into a cave by polar serpents. Hiccup accidentally wakes up a gigantic dragon, which also chases Hiccup. Hiccup manages to get back onto the boat, and uses the machine that generates a high-pitched noise to keep the monster away, identifying it as a Leviat Horgan. America is in sight, but a storm breaks out and the Leviat Horgan from the cave attacks the ship. Norbert and Hiccup fight on the top of the ship. Lightning strikes Norbert's axe and it enters the sea, killing the Leviat Horgan. Hiccup falls off the mast, as he swims up he hits his head on a sinking cauldron which shortly gives him amnesia, and then he passes out. He is rescued by fish legs and kamikaze. Back at the murderous mountains, Majuts is clearly the winner, and demands stoic and big boobied Bertha to be sacrificed to Sky Dragons. Old Wrinkly announces that Hiccup, Fishlegs and Kamikaze have not yet returned, and the race is supposed to be three months, five days and six hours, so they still have to wait for three months, before Majuts is declared winner, and the two other chiefs will be under temporary custody under Majuts. Kamikaze and Fishlegs are rescued by the Wanderers. The two take Hiccup on board too, and after Barkup's grandmother's medicine, Hiccup awakens. After a long time, the ticking things start to tick louder, because Old Wrinkly had set an alarm on it. With only six hours left, and thinking that Old Wrinkly really did have a reason to set the alarm, the three fly to Burke on the Norbert's flying machine, which the Wanderers had collected. The machine works well, but as they near Burke, the machine breaks and crashes into the ocean. Hiccup and his friends come just in time for the alarm to set off. Because Hiccup is the last person back, he demands Majuts to sing a love song at the next thing while dressed up as a nickel pretty shepherdess. 
How to Break a Dragon's Heart, this is the eighth book in the series. The Hooligans, while searching for kamikaze in the eastern archipelago, a dangerous section in the barbaric archipelago, accidentally crash their ship into a rock, and the ship sinks in the shallow waters of the Beach of the Broken Heart, a haunted beach belonging to wicked pirates called Ugly Thugs, forcing the hooligans to camp there. While on the beach, they find a mysterious object, and they discover it is a throne belonging to hooligans, as the hooligan coat of arms is on it. In the middle of the night, the leader of the Ugly Thugs, Yuji, and his men, discover the hooligans, waking them up. Yuji tells them that he doesn't want to kill them, but wants to talk to them about a strange event. A hooligan has been sending love letters to Yuji's daughter, Tantra Mowugali, and explains that if the person is of royal blood, the person can ask for Tantram's hand in marriage after the person finishes an impossible task, and if not, the person will be killed. Hiccup realizes that Fishlegs is the one who sent the letters, and spares Fishlegs' life by telling Yuji that he himself wrote the letters. Yuji then tells him the impossible task, to give them a barrel of mead made from the honey made by the bees on the island of Berserk, an island inhabited by crazy lunatics who enjoy feeding people alive to a dragon known as the beast in wicker baskets. Yuji then tells Hiccup that he should be back at Yuji's castle on Midsummer's Day at five o'clock in the morning with five pots of berserk honey. Back on Berk, Stoic convinces the other hooligans to help Hiccup collect the honey. Meanwhile, Fishlegs realizes that he himself is a berserk, after going berserk himself, and that he had been thrown into the sea in a lobster pot and had been adopted by hooligans, and goes off to berserk on his chicken poxet dragon. Hiccup and Toothless follow him on the wind walker. On berserk, Fishlegs successfully collect five pots of honey, but gets captured by berserks. So is Hiccup. At the berserk village. Hiccup and Fishlegs meet the other Fianca copyright S of Tantrum, one of them being humongously hotshot the hero. All of them are to be fed to the beast later in the evening. Hiccup realizes that the chef of the berserk chief is actually Alvin the Treacherous. Alvin explains that when he was in the Fire Dragon in Book 5, he had used his sword to pop open the stomach of the exterminator dragon he was riding. The Fire Dragon burst out in laughter, and Alvin floated out in a bubble which was later shot down by a berserk. Alvin then fell from the sky under the berserk chief's chef, and spared his own life by agreeing to become the chief's new chef. Hiccup tells Alvin that he can help him escape if he shows him where Kamikaze is imprisoned. Alvin agrees but while they are in the woods, he pushed Hiccup into a tree cell, where he meets a witch who introduces herself as Hogtrude, and Hiccup introducing himself as Fishlegs who helps get some nasty things from Toothless's tummy. The witch then finds Hiccup suspicious and decides to tell him a story and at the end of the story, they will both guess each other's names and whoever guesses right will get to kill the other. The witch then tells Hiccup how Grimbeard the Ghastly had three kids, Fifart, Chucklehead and Hiccup Horrendous Haddock too. Grimbeard tried to kill the second Hiccup by leaving him in the mountainside, upsetting his wife who left to look for the second Hiccup Meanwhile, the second Hiccup was adopted by Grimla Dragons and learned to speak Dragonese, but was found by Hooligans, and he and his adopted step dragon brother, a said Dragonus Giganticus Maximus named Furious, lived with Grimbeard. One day, Hiccup wanted to hold a petition for the dragons to demand freedom. However, Fifart tricked Grimbeard into thinking that it was an attack and Grimbeard killed Hiccup, but soon he realizes that Hiccup just wanted a peaceful petition and regrets his actions and buried his treasures and left in his boat, Furious took the second Hiccup's corpse away. The witch guesses Hiccup's correct name, and Hiccup guesses that the witch is Alvin the Treacherous's mother, both being correct. Hiccup then escapes by using a key that had been in Toothless Belly to unlock the door to the cell and rescues Kamikaze and they return to the berserk village. Hiccup goes back into his cage just as the feeding of the beast begins. Alvin Surprised that Hiccup has returned, chooses Hiccup to be fed to the beast first. Hiccup realizes that the beast is actually furious. After realizing that Hiccup is a descendant of a boy he loved, he agrees to help Hiccup if Hiccup sets him free. Hiccup realizes that the key he is can free Furious and they free the Fianca copyright s and cause chaos in the village. 
Furious then breaks the deal he made with Hiccup, and sets fire to the Berserk Woods and tells Hiccup that a year after he leaves the archipelago, he shall return to destroy the humans along with a dragon army. Hiccup, Kamikaze, Fishlegs, Toothless, the Windwalker and the Chicken Pox are returned to Burke with a honey. Meanwhile, Humongous bring his five pots of honey to Yuji's room and goes on his honeymoon with Tantrum. In the epilogue, Hiccup tells us that sometimes he dreams he is the father of the second Hiccup, and sees him riding on a dragon, promising he will return. How to Steal a Dragon Sword This is the ninth book in the series. Bad times come to the archipelago, and ever since the woods of Berserk burn down, it is as if the world is cursed. Hiccup and other young warriors are brought to the island where Flashburn's school of sword fighting waits for them. The children have three weeks at the school to train their sword fighting for New Year's Day. There will be a sword fighting competition, in which the winner is declared a new warrior of his tribe. The youngsters have to go up the cliff, the hard way, and are attacked by a pack of dragons of different species, which is unusual behavior for dragons. Hiccup's clever plan saves the lot of them. But once at the school, no one is to be found. Worse still, the only person there, the wicked witch Excelina, has returned as the castle's witch. She tells everyone that the dragons are revolting in a red rage, and are led by the dragon Furious, who was one year before released by Hiccup. She tells the tribes that the sword fighting competition must be used to find the next king of the wildrest. She tells them a prophecy which is about the next king, he has a dragon with no teeth, an arrow from a land that does not exist, Grimbeard's second best sword, a ticking thing, a rectangular shield, a throne, a crown, and the dragon jewel. Hiccup has got all of these things, except the throne, though he knows where it is, the crown, and the dragon jewel. Meanwhile, the witch makes sure that her son Alvin has no challenges during the competition. Hiccup finds the crown under Flashburn's school, along with a dragon called the Wodensfang, a very old, ancient dragon that was told to guard the crown by Grimbeard the Ghastly. The Wodensfang tells him he was the one who gave the first Hiccup the dragon jewel. He gets back into the hut and the witch attacks him but he was immune to the whip and venom on her claws gets himself covered in the poison in the struggle, wins the competition, beating his own father. Alvin is third. Hiccup is declared winner and tells the tribes that he wanted to free all dragons so that there would be no revolt in the first place. He wants to abolish slavery for both humans and dragons. Most tribes agree on this, but then, when all looks so well, Snidlark throws a stone at his head, knocking Hiccup's helmet off, revealing he has the slave mark. Everyone's shocked. The slave mark is the ultimate mark of shame. Since he has the slave mark, Hiccup is automatically a slave, disqualified from the competition, exiled from his tribe, and could never become chief, let alone a king. Stoic, Hiccup's father, is also banished, because he knew Hiccup was a runt, and thus should not have been part of their tribe in the first place, but instead abandoned as a baby. Everyone has to turn their backs, excluding Fishlegs, who gives Hiccup his lobster claw necklace, the only thing Fishlegs has from his parents. Alvin's the new king, and declares war on the dragons. Furious arrives and the war begins. Only Windwalker and Toothless stay faithful, and bring Hiccup to safety. He is followed by the dragons, who think he has the dragon jewel, the only thing that could stop the dragons now. In mid-chase he falls unconscious on Dragon back and wakes up safe in a cave, Hiccup now all alone, an outcast, an exile, no sword, no helmet, only the Windwalker, Toothless and the Woodens Fang by his side, Hiccup's in despair, until he finds he actually has the map to find the dragon jewel, and triumphantly cries, this is not the end I will be back. How to Seize a Dragon's Jewel, this is the tenth book in the series. The Dragon Rebellion has begun. Snitlout is the new chief of the hooligan tribe. Stoic has been banished and given the slave mark. And Alvin the Treacherous has eight of the king's lost things, and has been proclaimed the new king of the wildrest. But what can Hiccup do, now all alone and in exile? hunted by both humans and dragons. Can he find the dragon jewel, mankind's last and only hope? And if he does, what will he do with it? The book starts with Hiccup in exile. 
he is nearly killed by his mother, Vol Alarama while he deactivates dragon traps, and loses the map to her. He travels to a slave jail under Alvin the Treacherous a Euro unregistered trademark s control to spy on Alvin. There, he finds and befriends many slaves, including his father that combed the beaches during low tide, looking for the dragon jewel. Alvin discovers Hiccup and makes him look for the dragon jewel by himself, with a deadly armed guard. A deadly shadow swoops down and snatches Hiccup before he has a chance to look for the jewel. The dragon brings him to a hill to kill him, but notices that he has the lobster claw necklace. They tell him that they had promised to care for a berserker woman a Euro unregistered trademark s baby who was supposed to be killed by drifting through the ocean. They lost sight of the baby however, and it drifted to Burke and grew up to be fish legs. Hiccup admits he is not this child, and tells them a fish leak a Euro unregistered trademark s fate. He goes to this hole and gets pulled into it by its inhabitant, a large dragon with an eye on each finger. His dragon instincts tell him that this dragon cannot be reasoned with, so Hiccup plays dead long enough for the dragon to eat him up to the waist, which is when Hiccup stabs the dragon in a major vulnerable spot. He ventures off into the creature a Euro unregistered trademark s maze of glass walls because of a mysterious voice and finds fish legs. He also finds the dragon jewel. Then they swim to shore through and exit, and the deadly shadow picks them up, all flying triumphantly into the distance. Cressida Cole tells readers to stop reading there if they want a happy story. However Valhalarama finds Hiccup and takes him to the slave jail. There she convinces the slaves and others to join Hiccup against Alvin by making the slave mark the dragon mark. The dragons finally break into the jail and the humans flee. However when Hiccup frees Toothless and the wood ends Fang he loses the dragon jewel to Alvin. The story ends with Hiccup happily being reunited with his human companions. How to Betray a Dragon's Hero, the eleventh book in the series. While waiting for Valhalarama, the ten companions of the Dragonmuk hear a human calling for help then abruptly stopping. Soon they find Wolf Fangs in the river, showing them why he was screaming. Then they see why he stopped. Thousands of Dragon Rebellion dragons were sleeping on the river bank. Then they see who the human is. Snitlout. Everyone except Hiccup decided to leave him, but Hiccup persuades them to save him, accidentally waking up Snitlout's hogfly. The hogfly, in turn, accidentally wakes up the nearby Rebellion dragons. They all flee from the Rebellion dragons to their secret hideout, hiding as Furious and the dragons search for them. However, Alvin's spy dragons kidnap Kamikaze. Films DreamWorks Animation released on March 26, 2010 a computer animated film adaptation How to Train Your Dragon, directed by Chris Sanders and Dean DeBlois, the directors of Lilo and Stitch. The film features Gerard Butler as Stoic the Vast, Hiccup's father, Craig Ferguson as Gobbo the Belch, and Jade Barutra as Hiccup. The film proved to be a resounding critical and box office success, and became a major media franchise for DreamWorks Animation including upcoming a 2014 feature film sequel How to Train Your Dragon 2, with Dean DeBlois directing it. Differences from the book, the plot of the film is almost completely different from the first book in the series. The greatest change is how the Vikings in the book have the custom of capturing and training in combat against dragons even before the story begins a Euro but in the film, they are fighting a fierce war against the dragons and only switched to training them after Hiccup showed that this can be done. Furthermore, Toothless is completely reimagined as an injured Night Fury dragon, a rare larger and highly intelligent breed that is capable of carrying human riders on its back as a flying mount. However, Cole stated in her blog that she felt approvingly that the film remained true to the spirit and message of the book. Cole also explained that she felt that the changing of media triggered a necessary change in plot and characters. The Green Death is renamed the Red Death in the film. And at the end of the movie, Hiccup loses his foot. The most notable character who appears in the film but not in the book is Astrid, a fierce Viking girl and Hiccup's love interest. However, Astrid may represent the female character Kamikaze, who is present in the series of novels. Just like Kamikaze, Astrid is a highly skilled warrior and fighter who is a close friend of Hiccup's. Also, 
In Gift of the Night Fury, it is revealed that Astrid's deadly Nada dragon is named Stormfly, which is the name of Kamikaze's dragon in the book. However, Kamikaze and Astrid have different personalities. Furthermore, Fishlegs, who is portrayed as Hiccup's friend in the series of novels, is instead merely acknowledged by Hiccup in the film. See also How to Train Your Dragon, How to Train Your Dragon, References External links, official website